Let's talk about probability tables and specifically we're going to talk about simple, joint and conditional probabilities using this table that you see. We have um, 400 individuals who, um, 400 individuals that um, have two characteristics or two um, variables of interest in them that we are, um, that we've collected data on. Uh, their gender, uh, 250 of them are male and 150 of them are female. And then we ask them, um, if you were to buy a car, would you buy it mainly because of its appearance or mainly because of its performance? The letters A and P represent those two characteristics or those two events. There were 180 out of the total 400 people who buy a car because of its appearance and 220 who buy a car because of its performance. The breakdown or the contingency table, the cross tabulation if you will, uh, is given to us. So we know that 120 of them of the 400 are male men and they buy a car because of its appearance and 130 of them are male and buy a car because of its performance and those are the two subgroups that make up the total of uh, 250 people. So let's talk about simple which is sometimes called marginal probabilities. Um, simple or marginal probabilities are the um, probabilities of those event of the events that you see at work. The simple probability of being either a man or probability of being a woman, a female, um, and then the probability of uh, buying a car because of its appearance or probability of buying a car because of its performance. So let's look. Uh, there are 250 overall total men out of the 400 group, um, the group of 400, and that computes to be 0 0.625. So I can actually go here and write, write this as a 0 0.625, and that's the probability that I've computed um, for uh, being a, a man. Now, probability of being a female uh, is complement of being a man. So 1 minus the 0 0.625, which is also, um, which is 0 0.375, uh, is the probability of female, which of course I can also compute by taking the 150, the total number of females, and divided by the overall total of 400, and that's how I get 0 0.375. So either way, I will get 0 0.375 as the probability of female. Now with these red markings I'm turning this um, frequency table uh, into a um, probability table. Um, similarly we can compute probability of buying a car because of its appearance. There were 180 people who bought a car because of its appearance divided by 400 and we're going to get 0 0.45 and probability of buying a car because of its performance is y minus the probability of buying a car because of its appearance and uh, that's uh, 0 0.55 which can also be computed by taking uh, 220 and divided by 400. Either way we're going to get the same answer. So um, these probabilities can be added in here. These are simple or marginal probabilities and um, they can be written as 0 0.45 and 0 0.55. So now we have the simple or the marginal probabilities written in the margins of the table. Uh, please keep in mind that um, We've already discussed complementary events. Um, A and P are complementary to each other and M and F are complementary to each other. Um, we can also discuss mutually exclusive. 
um, if you're a female, then you cannot be part of the male ma men group and vice versa. So female and male are complementary to each other. Similarly, A and P are complementary. Um, let's assume that in this study we've asked them to either specify appearance or performance as the reason for their purchase. Therefore, A and P are, um, are um, mutually, uh, they, they are complementary to each other um, and also mutually exclusive. Let's now continue on and talk about joint probabilities. So far, we've only, in our analysis, we've only looked at uh, one event at a time. Either we were looking at probability of male or female or probability of appearance or probability of performance. Now, what if we want to compute intersection? That's what your book calls it, joint probabilities or intersection of two events. Well, that's represented with a symbol, an inverted U um, or horseshoe. And here um, we can, com we can um, find the intersection of two events, A, A and M. And that would be read as probability of a intersect M or probability of A and M, uh, A and M. So um, that is 120 people over 100, uh, I'm sorry, over um, 400, the overall total. And uh, that is um, 0.3. So we can see that uh, the 120 people right here uh, are both um, a male and they are also buying a car because of its appearance. So um, that 120 has both of those characteristics present in it uh, and it doesn't make a difference whether I say probability of uh, M and A or whether I say probability of A and M. Either way, I'm looking at that group of 120 and 120 out of the 400 where um, um, fill that characteristic. So I can come in here and um, write the 0 0.3. Maybe I should erase first um, all the line I put around it. And um, So that's 120. And um, uh, we have 0 0.3 as the joint probability. Similarly, we can compute um, probability of uh, M and P, which is the same as probability of P and M. So the order doesn't matter. And um, that would be 130 over 400 which is uh, 0 0.325. But also note that A and M and P and M are complementary to each other. Um, um, so we have uh, 0 0.3 and 0 0.325 which of course, the, these two subgroups, the 0 0.3 and the 0 0.325, must add up to 0 0.625. And um, of course, the frequency count of them also add up, the 120 and the 130 add up to 250. So um, these two uh, joint probabilities, um, probability of A and M, plus the probability of P and M must equal probability of M. So similarly, we can now compute um, the other two joint probabilities, probability of F and A, uh, which equals 60 over 400, uh, which is 0 0.15 and um, probability of um, F and P, um, 
we can um, either compute it by saying that is 90 over 400, which is um, 0 0.225. Or another way of saying it, we can say this is equal to probability of F minus probability of um, F uh, and A, which we computed above. So since the probability of F is 0 0.375, if I subtract probability of F and A, which I computed up here, 0 0.15, um, let me write that better. 0 0.15, um, then I can get um, the same 0 0.225. So if you understand these relationships, um, you can work your way in and out of these tables. So this is 0 0.225. So notice the point 0.3 and the 0.15 add up to 0.45 in this first column. The 0.325 and the 0.225 add up to the 0.55 in the second column. And of course the 0.625 and the 0.375 equal 1, uh, which is the total probability of all the 400 individuals. Also the 0.45 and the 0.55 add up to 1. Um, and notice that um, all of the um, joint probabilities, everything in, written in here in red, add up to 1. And also notice that the first row, the probabilities add up to the marginal, it's written in the, um, in the margin of it, 0.625. And similarly with the second row, it adds up to 0.375. So, so far we have talked about um, simple probabilities, we've talked about joint probabilities, and now we want to talk about um, conditional uh, probabilities. So, 